Hello, thanks for joining today. This is Mike with Mountpack. Today is day number three for um, 112620-1641 Volkswagen engine rebuild. Uh, last time we cleaned up the case and cleaned up the parts and pieces so we could put it into the engine. Um, today we're going to be showing you how, or I'm going to be showing you how to uh, put the gears on the crankshaft and then also install dowels into the case and then install the main bearings, um, lifters, camshaft, and um, any other little components that are involved with um, this engine build today for day number three. I hope you enjoy and learn something today. Okay, here's the engine case is all clean. So now I'm um, using a paper towel and just making sure any water is left over is um, soaked up so I can install the dowels into the cases. And there's the dowels. There's five of them, four on this side and one on the other side. The second one in from the thrust bearing has a two halves for the bearing. Make sure the dowel hole faces the, the flywheel. So I pre-install all the main bearings into the dowels. And then I take a uh, Sharpie and mark the case. Then install the main bearing on the other side. I remove the um, main bearings. And then I'm going to install the distributor drive gear. And I put lube on both sides of these washers. You have to have two washers here. And you put them on the drive shaft at the end. And then I lube up the whole entire gear area. And then I also uh, lube up the spring too. I install it into the case half and then I um, install the uh, I want to call it a dummy distributor um, the one that I use for my engine builds um, it actually has marks on it where I have the spot where I do the engine build then after the cases are together I know exactly where number one cylinder is top dead center Now before I put the lifters in, I like to kind of make sure everything's clean. Uh, oftentimes when you put lifters in, it kind of catches and sticks. And so I try not to um, just throw them in there. Um, and then I uh, took that one lifter and tried to make sure all the lifters could go up and down easy. And then I put the engine assembly lube on these uh, four lifters and then the other four for the other case. And make sure they're nice and uh, lubed up for the engine build. Here's the other case with uh, installing the lifters. And this time I, I put uh, grease on my finger or engine assembly lube. And I stuck it into the uh, lifter holes. And so um, that worked out really good. And then I put uh, some of the lube on the main bearing. And then here's uh, me installing the crankshaft onto a gland nut that I have welded onto one of my engine stands in preparation to install the gears onto the crankshaft. And if you uh, need some more um, know-how for installing these gears, um, go into my YouTube channel under uh, Volkswagen and or VW and you'll see uh, in more detail how to install the gears onto the crankshaft. Here's all the 
components for the crankshaft and then we put it onto a hot plate and then um, turn it on high and then kind of the rule of thumb is when it's smoking uh, pretty good uh, that's hot enough to put onto the crankshaft you want to make sure everything's nice and clean and don't forget to uh, install the bearing that goes um, on the other side of the gear the other thing is um, remember the main bearings the dowel hole in the main bearing needs to face the flywheel when you install them and um, when you put on this bearing uh, you want to make sure that um, it doesn't touch the, the crankshaft before it gets to the bearing area and then the other thing is you'll see when we're installing the uh, the gears but the the first gear you put on you want to make sure that the um, two timing holes inside or marked on the gear is facing the pulley uh, that you have the belt on it um, that is so you can know um, and th these um, type of pliers you can find at a probably an automotive store I'm not exactly sure where I found them but I think it was just some sort of um, your, your common automotive uh, parts store And I usually uh, try to, after I put it on, uh, get a hammer and screwdriver and just kind of tap it a little bit uh, to make sure that um, it's on uh, the proper area that it needs to be. After that uh, ring goes on, I like to take a hammer and screwdriver and just tap it all around to make sure it's seated really good. There's the gears on the crankshaft. With the bearings, don't forget the bearing. And then pretty soon I'm going to put the uh, the other bearing on, and then the woodruff key. And um, After the bearings on, you take the, um, it's kind of like a concave washer of some sort. It's, it's, um, it's weird because you think the cupping thing side should go towards the center of the engine and it doesn't, it goes outside. And then you install the woodruff key now for the pulley. That's really hard to do it after the fact. I mean, it's possible, but it's, it's hard. Okay, here is the connecting rods, and these are the connecting rod bearings. There is a 14 millimeter nut that you have to take off on each of those connecting rods. And I couldn't take them off with a wrench without a vise, so I had to put them into a vise and remove those. Um, as you'll see, You'll be able to pull apart the two halves of the connecting rod and those two halves connect onto the crankshaft of the engine. They were uh, not easy to remove.
Alright, so putting on the bearings, you'll see that there is a groove on each of the pieces of the connecting rod, and the bearing has a groove as well, or a nub, and you put that nub into the groove. And when you install the connecting rod onto the crankshaft, you want to make sure those grooves are on opposite sides of each other, not on the same side. So now they're on the same side, swap it, and you install it so they're on the opposite sides. So we're going to go through the process of those connecting rod bearings three more times. Remember the groove, put them on opposite sides. The bearing should seat pretty well into the connecting rod journal there. And I like to keep the parts and pieces together with each of the crank, or excuse me, the connecting rod, just to make sure that I'm putting the right parts and pieces together. I don't want to um, swap anything. All right, there you go. Got one more after this one. And as you can see, this part is, you know, relatively straightforward and easy. And there's the last one. Now one thing you'll see is that the connecting rod, one side has a dimple on it. That one faces the sky. And so you want to look at the engine and see where number one, number two, number three, and where the connecting or the camshaft's going and the connecting rods are going in. So number three is on the back. Number three is on the back. And then number one is next. And then you got four and then two. So it'll, though that dimple goes up towards the sky. And one thing about this build right now is um, I realized that I don't have the right um, connecting rod bearings. And so I have to, I order the right ones. And then also I don't have my cam bearings as well. So I can't finish putting everything together. I was hoping to get everything together. So next video. I could show you putting together the two halves and torquing it down. Anyway, so hopefully uh, you're able to do this on your own. Um, very little tools required to do this. Thank you for joining today. Uh, don't forget to uh, like and comment below. And then also please subscribe to my channel. And uh, one more thing is, uh, if you really like this, um, feel free to share with uh, your other uh, Volkswagen um, people that you associate with and uh, hopefully they'll be able to get their project on the road. I know uh, Volkswagens are um, an interesting um, vehicle. There's a lot of different characters for each different uh, vehicle that you own. I've, I've owned many in my life and I know that firsthand. Thanks so much and, and have a great day. Bye-bye.